Okay, so our next topic in B1 is topic B, and it is health and diet that we'll be looking at. So, just to be very clear, when we talk about diet, in a scientific concept, context, we simply mean what you eat. It's not used in the sense it often is outside of a scientific context. So, if you say to someone that you're on a diet, you tend to mean that you're eating less food, or you're only eating carbs, or you're not eating carbs... It's not like that. Whenever we talk about diet, we simply mean the food that you eat. So we need to know what makes a balanced and healthy diet. And it's basically to do with the chemicals that you consume that inside your foods. And there are different types of them and we need to know about them. So the first type is carbohydrates. And they are just made up of simple sugars like glucose and they give us energy. So we use them for quick energy really. The main, they are the main source of energy in our diet. Now, if we eat too much carbohydrate, what our body does is it converts the glucose contained in the carbohydrates into glycogen um, or fats so that we can store them for later use. So the next chemical that we eat are fats and they're made up of fatty acids and glycerol. And again, they give us energy, but they are easily stored energy. So our body will choose to store fats if for instance there are carbohydrates available for energy and fat is stored under the skin and around organs as adipose tissue and um, rem remembering to call it adipose tissue is what we're looking for from the higher students more than the foundation so the next class of chemical we consume is proteins and um, proteins are made up of amino acids now these are really important because our amino acids are basically the building blocks for our cells and we can get proteins from plants or animals but we really sh need to be eating plant uh, sorry animal proteins because we can't make all the amino acids from what you get from plants so some of them we can only find in other animal protein so the job of the proteins um as i said they used to build up cells so they are used for growth and repair so obviously it's very important for teenagers to eat proteins because they're still growing and children as well and proteins can't be stored that's why we have to keep eating them regularly <clears throat> so the next class of chemical is minerals and iron is the best example to use because it links back to some of our other topics when we're talking about haemoglobin so iron is used to make haemoglobin so just to remind you, haemoglobin is the chemical in red blood cells that carries the oxygen around our body. And again, iron is something that we can't store, so we have to make sure we regularly eat the right amounts of it. Next comes vitamins. Uh, vitamin C is the example, very easy to remember that one. And it prevents scurvy. So basically vitamins prevent us from getting ill. If we don't have enough vitamins, our bodies can't do certain things and then this presents as disorders or illnesses. And again, vitamins can't be stored and if you eat too much of them, they, we just excrete them from our body. So you need to make sure that you're regularly eating the right amount of vitamins. Next class of chemical is fibre. So beans are a good source of this. Uh, basically the job of fibre is simply to prevent constipation. So fibre just allows everything to keep moving through our digestive system. And again, it's obviously not stored since its job is to pass right through us. And then the final thing is water. Um, now 70% of our body is water and we consume it to prevent ourselves from being dehydrated. So basically running out of water. And we will talk a little bit more about dehydration in another topic, but for the moment that's all we need to know. So a balanced diet is something that can, is something that contains the correct amount of all these chemicals. So you need to have the right amount of carbohydrates and fats and proteins in your diet. And if you have those, then we would say the diet is balanced. However, how much of certain things different people need and what is considered balanced will depend on a lot of factors. So gender has an effect on it. Um, I'm sure you're aware that men need more calories in a day than women. Age has an effect on it. As I mentioned earlier, um, teenagers and children need more proteins than older people because they're still growing. 
level of activity. If you've got a job where you do an awful lot, you're very active all day, you will need more carbohydrates in your diet. If you have a job where you are sitting down a lot, you're going to want to avoid too many carbohydrates and sugars because you're probably using less of them. Uh, the other things that can affect people's diet is religion and lifestyle choices. So, for instance, uh, Muslims won't eat pork and Buddhists won't eat meat some or all of the year. And people who have chosen to be vegetarian or vegan, again, will have to try and find other places to get their proteins. And if you are a vegetarian or vegan, you need to try and get a wide range of proteins because as I mentioned, the body can't make everything we need from plant proteins very easily. Some plant proteins are more rich than others, so we just need to make sure you get a wide variety of them. Now, medical conditions can also affect your diet. So for instance, if you have diabetes, which we talk about later, but diabetes is a condition where you can't control the amount of sugar in your blood. So if you eat too much sugar, then you are gonna have a problem if you've got diabetes. If you don't, that's less of an issue for you. And allergies as well, obviously, are going to affect your diet because you don't want to eat anything that will cause you to go into anaphylaxis. Right, I've mentioned protein quite a lot because it is quite important. Protein is a very important component of our diet, um, especially for people who are growing. However, um, sources of protein can be a big issue for people in developing countries because they don't get enough because of various factors. This can be due to overpopulation, limited investment in agriculture, so it might be that they are um, growing crops rather than uh, raising animals, so there is not much meat available. Now that's a limitation of their situations and where they live, but the problem is that if you eat too many plant proteins and not enough animal proteins, you can end up with protein deficiency. And the name for that deficiency is written just at the bottom of the page here. So this one here. Oop, try putting my pen on again. There we go, this one here. And um, again, I uh, can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. As long as you know how to spell it in the exam, you'll be fine. Okay, so let's just go back to here. There we go. Right, so the symptoms of protein deficiency are having a swollen belly very thin arms and legs and pure immunity. Now, if you've seen pictures of people in third world countries, you often see pictures of children and their bellies look really, really big. Now, <clears throat> that's not a sign that they've just eaten a lot. It's a sign that they don't have enough protein in their diet and that they are very ill. So, how much protein does a person need to eat? Well, this, oops, Daisy, the amount of protein that a person needs to eat is called their estimated average requirement, and we can calculate that. So a person's estimated average requirement in grams is calculated by doing 0.6 times their body mass in kilograms. So just be very careful that you pay attention to the units. Now, if you ever need to use this equation in the exam, they will give it to you. You just need to be familiar with it and what you're calculating. So this just gives you an estimate for how much they need to eat. It's not an exact amount. So if I calculated it for myself, I would come out with a number. But if I was, um, if there was someone, say a teenage boy who was only 14 but weighed the same as me, their estimate would be the same value, but they would probably actually need to eat more. It's just a guideline. It's not a, this is exactly how much you must eat. So just be aware of that whenever you're asked to calculate these. So the next thing that we can calculate for a person is their BMI. BMI you've probably heard of, it's something called body mass index and it's just a way, again an estimate, of deciding whether or not someone is over or underweight because there are health issues associated with both conditions. And the way we calculate BMI is mass in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. Now again, if you need to calculate this in the exam, the equation will be given to you. You just need to be familiar with it and the thing to just watch out for is to remember to square the height so um, just here underneath oh that didn't work apologies and um, just on the bottom you need to make sure that you're aware that it's squared and just be very careful and keep an eye out for that so what does BMI mean well if you have a BMI of less than 20 you're considered to be underweight 
and there are health risks associated with that. You are likely to have vitamin or mineral deficiencies, you could have heart disease, and having a BMI this low can be a sign of eating disorders such as anorexia or bulimia. Now, what's considered to be a healthy and normal BMI is 20 to 25. 25 to 30 is overweight. And if you're in this category, you have an increased risk of arthritis, diabetes, heart disease and breast cancer. And if you have a BMI of more than 30, you are considered clinically obese and your risk of those conditions is much higher. Now, again, these are risks. It, there is nothing that says that if you have a BMI of 30, you will definitely get these conditions you are just more likely to get these conditions. It's a slight difference, but you just need to be careful of it and make sure that you're aware. Okay, so that is it for diet. I hope it's been helpful. Again, if you have any questions, remember to bring them along to the session on Monday.